Hi, this is Shannon and I think we're on part number four of understanding your student's scoring report. So come on, let's get back to where we were. We ended at spelling and I couldn't find the section in the book because there's not one. Um, basically for spelling, what they do is they give you words in a sentence and they'll have, um, so they'll have a sentence and they'll have four things, well they'll have three words underlined. So they'll have choice A, B, or C, and then D is no mistake. Okay, and that's what you have to choose. So those, that's what you have for those. Um, okay, so science. There's 40 problems. So yes, if you add up, let's see, if you add up 11, 11, 11, and 7, those are the problems that are on the test. Again, the rest of them are just kind of embedded in there. Okay. So again, um, those are just basic science questions, life science, physical science, earth science, nature of science, the models, they look at forms and functions, constancy, those are, yeah. those are some things, but yeah, so you get a variety of different questions that are kind of going over those um, types of science questions. And then the social science. Okay, so there's 40 problems. This, this student answered 30 of them correct. That gave her 75. The national percent correct is 60. Let's look. That gave her an above average. Let's look at the, um, the front page. So we're on science. Social science. So 30 out of 40 actually gave her the 77th percentile. Okay, so even though it's a 75. It's really close to her national percentile right there, but that still has nothing to do with that, okay? Okay, so ask some history questions, some geography, look at a map, you have some um, political science questions, you know, you ask like, which one is the White House, or who is this famous political figure, and then you have some economics, and you have, um, some of these other ones. So there's 40 questions, so you have 10, 10, 10, and 10. Okay, so those are your basic questions, and then these would be some of your embedded questions in there, because yeah, there's not 60 questions or 80 questions there. Okay, um, listening, 40 questions, okay. The student scored 29 out of 40. Now the listening section, um, what it is, is this, the, the proctor reads a paragraph or two about a certain subject. They have, infor let's see, informational, yeah. There's some different interpretation, no, literary, informational, and functional. So there are different types of um, readings that they read to them. Maybe one is just instructions on how to do something. And then another one is um, just like a, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, just maybe a, something that happened, an event that happened. And then they are asked by the, um, the proctor to answer three or four questions after pertaining to that paragraph. So then the proctor will read another section that has two or three paragraphs, and then she'll ask the students three or four more questions pertaining to those um, paragraphs. So the students have to listen. They have to listen to what she is um, reading. They have to pay attention, they have to, and then they have to answer the questions. So they have to recall. So after she reads the paragraphs and asks the questions, she cannot repeat it. It's not like she can go back and read the paragraph again. So they don't know what the questions are ahead of time. They just need, they, they read the, they have the paragraph read to them, and then they answer questions about the paragraph. And again, those, uh, there was, oops, let's see. There were 40 questions, and again, so it's only the, the 10 and the 30 add up, but and then there's all those are kind of extra stuff, okay? The last section um, is the total language section, and for the first, second, and third graders, we use form A, and for the fourth through twelfth graders, we use form D, just a difference of when we want to scan our test locally, we have to use the two-part books that um, are Form A. Okay, so for language, there's 48 questions. The student answered 33 of them correct, giving her a 69% correct. Average was 61. 
Okay, so then again, it breaks it down. This pre-writing, composing, editing, narrative, narrative, inform, um, informative, and persuasive. And then, of course, your thinking skills. But again, to get to 48, uh, you have your right, pretty much, or, yeah, write those, those questions right there. And then they, these are extra. So, so let's add, what, I get asked, what's on the language section? Let me get to that section and we'll look at it. What they, they have a lot of, um, of course I can't find it, sorry. Come on language. All right. No, so we're gonna, okay, so here's the language section. All right, so for language form D, we get questions like pre-writing. People ask me, what? The kids don't write on here, so what is pre-writing? Well, pre-writing is they, they give the students, like they tell the students, okay, we want to have an event, and we want you to advertise it for us. What would be the first thing you would do? Okay. Or something like, I want you to, I have given you this an assignment to write a paper on. What's your first steps? What would you do first? That type of stuff. And then they also look at um, how to, they don't have to put together an outline, but it's an outline and then maybe like there's a piece, like where would this piece go in the outline? Or where is this properly placed in the outline? So they have to know how to do outlines. Um, they also have to use, know how to use research material. So that's like the referencing. Um, where would you get information about, you know, an event that's coming up in your town? Where would you go? Would you go to... The library would you look in a magazine would you look in the newspaper you know kind of things like that like what would you do where would you find that information how do you go about starting this topic or starting this procedure and then um, for the editing they will give the students um, a, a paragraph or two they'll have things underlined and they'll say how would this best be written it's like maybe the comm is off or something's off on the um, the paragraph. So how would this best be written? And the student has to pick. There's choices. Um, three choices and then there's an as it is choice. And again it's the paragraph where they're putting the comma, where they're putting um, maybe quotation marks, um, some um, grammar, how to choose the correct verb, would you use uh, kick, kicked or kicking, you know, verbiage. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for your scoring report. Um, again, that's the overall picture. Let's go back. So you got your three pages. The number one page you should really pay attention to, would give you everything, is this first section. There. That is your, um, that's what you really need to pay attention to. The rest of this, the rest of it just breaks down the different um, subtests that your student took and to different little pieces and um, where they scored well because there's a lot there's a lot of different things in science. There's different um, types of science and there's lots of different things in vocabulary. As we saw there's synonyms, there's multiple meaning words, context clues and so on. Um, math Again, can they add, can they subtract, can they do fractions, can they add decimals, can they um, interpret graphs, can they do problem solving, can they look at patterns, can they look at shapes. Sometimes they'll say, here's two little shapes, what, what pattern would this make if we put it together? Or, I'm sorry, they take like a, yeah, two shapes, what could, what, they, they turn them upside down, or what would this look like upside down, or a mirror image. But I think that's it. That's the general overview. And besides seeing the test, which you cannot do, Pearson does not allow, um, that's an overall picture of your scoring report and how to interpret it. So this is Shannon Brown with CC Testing Services, and thank you for watching.